Hey guys, welcome back for another 356 episode. Today we're gonna work on these engine deck lid grills. And without fail, anytime I drive my car somewhere, whether it's a car gathering or just around town, if I stop and talk to someone, the first thing they always say is, what's up with your grills and how come they're not sitting down flush? Or is that supposed to be like that? What's wrong here? Aren't those gonna fall out? Did you do that on purpose? So while I'm in the chrome and sort of a cosmetic phase, I think I should deal with this right away. So these are aluminum. I think originally they came anodized from the factory, but these things are like 60 years old. The anodization has mostly been sacrificed by now. So there's a couple options. You know, you, could, you can polish them and then re-anodize them. Um, that's a tough process because when you're anodizing old metal, um, any kind of contamination on it is going to make it really difficult to have a nice uniform finish. A lot of guys have a um, special like uh, deburring process with like vibratory media that, you know, it'll kind of polish it as is. Um, or you can do like what I'm going to do and take it apart and polish each individual piece and then put it back together. Reason why is because I'm hardcore DIY guy, but also because some of these little veins are bent and I want to not only polish it, but also straighten it and make sure it has the right contour so it fits the car really well. I don't want to have any gaps on the deck lid or anything. I'm going to probably do the like elbow grease method and I think it's going to give me the best polish and also it's going to give me the best fit to the car. My car is a C, so theoretically these are easy to take apart because it's just got these little nuts here that attach a rod and it kind of holds all the veins in place. Um, and I've soaked these with penetrating oil, give it some more penetrating oil. And I know from experience that these will come apart. True story, I actually uh, brought one of these with me to a hotel room and some tools and so forth. And I, and I did get the other one mostly all the way apart with just basically this. This is just a uh, seven millimeter socket. So I'll show you how to take this one apart and then I'll show you where I got stuck on the other one. This is the other one. I got it you know, pretty much taken apart, but these little barrels or spacers that are between the veins, um, they tend to kind of rust or corrode onto this common shaft and there's just two nuts on either end so it's just a shaft with threaded ends and then you have nuts on the end so i need to come up with a way to to really get that apart i've tried penetrating oil and heat and all kinds of stuff and i just couldn't couldn't get it apart Sometimes it's good just to wiggle it back and forth a few times. Make sure that penetrating oil is doing its job. And there's the nut. It's just a real tiny little guy. Even if you think you have a rust-free 356, you always find something. Yeah, that's turning. So the whole shaft is spinning on this side, which is, which is good. We'll just try to get it out. We don't have to have both nuts off. We can, we can remove it from just pushing the whole rod out. And what I didn't have in the hotel room are some nice high quality pliers. Have just the right jaws to go inside the little recess there and just, and just turn that. So a couple different tools. It's almost better, like in this case, the nut stayed on. So that's allowing me to turn the whole shaft and I, I can loosen up all the spacers. So that's, that's kind of a win if you can get that to do that. And then now we might be able to grab this and just turn and pull. Let me come over here to the edge of the table.
Now see how this has a little bit of a wobble to it? I don't think that's supposed to do that. So that means that this rod has a little bit of a bow to it, which if you ever put luggage on your deck lid or someone puts their hand on it, it's very possible to bend these. But I found that some are straight and some are bent. See how it's turning that barrel right there? That's the one that it's stuck on. So I think what I'm gonna do, especially on this one that's very, very stuck, I'm gonna make something that can grip onto these little barrels because like on this one, I cannot get them apart. And I don't wanna just put the pliers on the barrel because it's soft aluminum. So I'm gonna make a little jaw for my pliers so we can you know, put some pressure on that and hopefully break it free. So this is a piece of black Delrin and it's already happens to have two holes in it. I don't know why I have this, but it's just in my plastic scrap bin. So these are the spacers and this does fit in pretty loose, but I think if I cut a slit in here, I could then put my pliers on it and kind of grip it. So let me cut a little groove in there with my hacksaw and we'll see if it's small enough to grip it. If not, we'll drill a new hole a little smaller. So now it's gripped on there pretty well. So let's see if we can manage to get this one apart. Get everything nice and flat on the table. Yeah, I might need to clean it with some acetone. I think I got a little bit of penetrating training oil on there. Yep, still slipping. Just try the tiniest of hammers here. Mm, just slipped right off the tool there. So still having trouble breaking that free. We haven't really marred the surface at all. Just, you know, it's still in good condition. These will get polished as well. This new hole is only big enough to allow the rod to go through. So now if I use that to maybe break all of them free at once, so we can just tap on it lightly. And I don't want to damage the rod, so I'm just using one of these nuts here. And I don't think the towel is helping, so let me move over here. Hasn't moved at all. So I'm gonna get my toaster oven back out and we'll heat this up to like 300 degrees. That's not gonna hurt the aluminum. And that should actually expand these spacers because the aluminum will expand faster than the steel. That should give it some extra room, and then maybe while it's hot, we can kind of tap it down. I need a bigger oven. The grill on the grill. That one came out pretty easy. Put a nut on one of these ends, see if we can pull it out as well. My understanding is the earlier grills aren't put together with nuts. They're actually peened on. So those are harder to disassemble and that's why polishing it together, you know, makes more sense.
I believe we can just slip this over. See the threads sometimes get stuck there on the end. So that worked out well. This is very fragile when it's disassembled. Now the lengths of these are different. So the two on the end are slightly shorter than those in the middle. Everything in the middle is the same length. So it should be easy to put back together, but let's just double check that the left and the right are the same length. Yeah, these are the same. So the ends are the same but the center and the ends are different. And they're different by, you know, quarter of an inch or so. It's probably like seven millimeters, something like that. Quite a bit different. And then a good example of a bent one would be, I just saw it, where'd it go? Yeah, this guy here is, is pretty bent. It's got a big, big wave in it there. Doesn't really matter which order the centers are in, but look at this one just comes right apart. So that was easy. The other one's still heating up in the barbecue. Let's go check on it. 150, it was a little bit warmer. It's cooling off really quick. With aluminum, it's just gonna do that. So let's just give it a few taps while we can. Nope, still not budging. Even with all that temperature in there, so I'm not still turning, but I'm starting to mushroom the end. Shoot. See how this rod has some rust on it? I suspect that's the problem. It's rusted and the rust kind of expands a bit and makes it real tight on these spacers because there's not a lot of room for these spacers. Not much clearance there. It's a pretty tight fit. Nope. Now it's kind of just polishing this piece for me, but putting scratches in it too. So we need to be careful we don't remove too much material that. Even though these are super smooth jaws, it still tends to scratch it. I just realized this side has more threads on it than this side does. So maybe I can use that to its advantage. And if I put the block in there, I might be able to just tighten up against the block and pull it out that way. So that's put some pressure on these two veins are no longer loose. So that might, have me that might mean that these two have moved slightly. So if we can get pressure on all of these, it might pull it off. But I don't want to break the rod either. Because this rod's about to snap. Yep. Only these two have shifted some. Let's try it with one of the spacers that did come off. Now these first three are pretty tight, but these last four are not. It's starting to mushroom this spacer right here on the end, so we're really fighting this thing. So I'm gonna take this over to the press and start pushing.
I am still working at this. It's cooled down again. The last heat cycle did not loosen it up um, like I wanted it to. So my next step is to use crazy glue. I'm gonna use some uh, super glue here. I'm basically gonna try to you know, glue this block onto these bars so I can grip it just a little bit better. It's a good sign when your super glue glues itself to the cap. Out of all the videos I make, who knew this was gonna be the comedy of airs video? All right, I'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry and then we're gonna break it free. How I get the uh, piece out of the Delrin, I'm not sure yet. Okay, this, this might have worked. At least getting one off, so let's see here. I'm just wiggling and pulling without trying to bend anything. Yeah. There it is. And like I said, um, it's gonna be tough getting that out of there. Just one more vein off. Try one more. You can see the rust that is evident on the shaft. That is what my problem is. This isn't the first time I use super glue on the channel. Remember with the 356 transmission, I super glued some inspection tools onto the differential for measurement and was really happy with how it works. Here we go again. I'm gonna re-glue that one on, maybe give it a little bit more time. Yeah, tons of torque on this. This is actually the, the bar is flexing and twisting. So if I can just get it to come loose, you can kind of hear things crackling. Wow. I'm gonna switch to this side because I don't like how much it's twisting. But let's see if it'll come off. Just slowly working it back and forth. Okay, that worked, I got one more off. So now I got two of these um, sleeves glued into this Delrin bar. So I, I'm gonna soak it in acetone and see if I can get them back. I'd like to have them back. This is acetone. I've just submerged that into the acetone. So we'll give that a few minutes. I think it should attack the the super glue and let me slide those off. And hopefully this is, I think Delrin, it should be reusable to get the remaining pieces off. Right now, as it stands, I have one, two, three, four, five more to go. There's two. No damage to these. I mean, they're definitely dirty, but uh, didn't damage them. I think there's only one that was sort of flat spotted with the pliers. So this seems to be the method that works. Just gotta keep going at it. Just look at that rust on there. And they say you can't weld aluminum to steel. This was certainly welded. If I put these two together, there's a mismatch here in the way it's curved. This has got a little lump in there. That's also because the bottom of this is, is, is wrinkled. So. I don't know what, what happened first. Probably this got pushed down and it caused a buckle in the bottom because it's pretty difficult to bend these unless it's outside the car. So this needs to be pulled back up. This is probably one of the most damaged pieces. This piece here is pretty good, but it has a little bit of a uh, space here on the end. You just look like 
sight down the end, you can kind of see it's got a little bit of a ripple down there. So this is very easy to just correct with hand pressure. So I'm watching as I bend it. And I'm just sneaking up on it ever so slightly. My hands have a polishing compound on them. But I'm, I'm just putting pressure right in the area that needs it the most. And that's pretty good. There's a little bend on this one, so I'm going to turn it. Slight pressure. It's getting pretty good. There's basically no gap from the top to the bottom. And the contour here is, is perfect. There's nothing standing up or down on that. And this is the one that has too much curvature here on the end. So I've clamped two pieces of hardwood down to my table. And so this will go in here just like that. And I'm just going to, you know, bend it. Ever so slightly. We just keep checking our work. Everything's lined up till you get to right here. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm pretty pretty happy with it. The two fit, you know, well down the center. So right down the center, it's a good fit. Contour is good. So this one's ready to polish. A lot of them look like this on the ends. There's another bent one. This piece had a little too much crown to it, so I, I clamped it and heated it. I think that's gonna hold it down, do the trick. The side is the same, it's got too much curvature. I think someone probably pried it off of the car and it just bent it up, so there's way too much curve here. This won't fit the car. The curvature in this direction is spot on. Final fitment on this will be on the car. We'll put this down without any rubber and make sure it fits as tight as possible to the paint. A Little bit of distortion here. At this point, everything's been straightened and ready for polish. These are the end pieces, there's four of those, and then these are the centers. That's not all of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started polishing while we still get the rest of this apart. I only have three veins left on here. It's working, the super glue method is getting everything off, but it's pretty time consuming. So while that's drying with super glue, I'm going to be polishing all these pieces. So this is my polishing procedure. Um, just a little bit of acetone and then I'm going over it with the gray Scotch-Brite. That's taking off whatever's left of the anodization, or the anodize. I can see some, some gouges or some scratches. Like right there is a couple little scratches. I'm not sure where that came from. If that is the case, then I go with uh, 400 and a little bit of water. The soap in the water, the soap and water. And then I just kind of only hit the spots that really need to, to be cleaned up. So there's that scratch right there. Try not to remove too much material 
This stuff does have a grain to it. I don't want to over polish it. This is, I think, an extruded piece. So you can see some of the factory marks on it when it was made. So I'm going to leave some of that on there. I mean, I could sand it all the way down, starting with 200 and make it perfectly clean. But trying to make this look original is possible. And then this is the uh, higher grit stuff. 1000 and then 1500 is the final, final paper. And you can hear this is still pretty gritty. So it is, it is both polishing and removing just that top layer of aluminum. And if I see any scratches or divots in it, like right there, I'll go back to 400, smooth it out. Let's go take it over to the polishing wheel and we'll polish it up. It's using a little bit of this red rouge, not much. And this is where, you know, it's a little bit dangerous to just do this freehand. If you're concerned about bending this, you probably should put it on like a, like a piece of wood, screw it down. But I'm pretty comfortable just using my hand pressure here. And it does get hot, so I keep it moving. See, it's already starting to get shiny. It's a little easier for me without the glove because then it slides on my fingers and I have a little bit better feel, so. As soon as I feel it get hot, I just move. So it's kind of got a lot of the compound still on it, but it's certainly getting shiny. Then I try to get the majority of the compound off. And then I have this polishing compound from Turtle Wax. This is Precision Platelet. I like this a lot. I have some other polishing compounds, but this Turtle Wax is better than like the Chemical Guys or the Meguiar's. So I just put a little bit on the part. And then I have this variable speed here, I can turn my drill up or down. If there's any kind of scratches or divots in this top part, I'll go back with 400 and take those out. Make sure it's absolutely pristine. But that is really, you know, pretty shiny. We just got to do that over and over again because there's a bunch of this. These are all polished. It's finally now time to assemble. Oh, it's finally together. So a little more polishing to do on the outer frame and there's a couple like scratches and stuff like I talked about. I can see some things with the magnifying glass. So there is a little bit more to do here. Plus, I think I'm gonna take it apart one more time and replate these center rods. Here's the three rods from the other side. I did get everything taken apart and didn't damage these little spacers too bad. Um, there's just one that has a tiny little flat spot on it. Basically, this took a lot longer than I expected. I thought I was gonna have these on the car today. This was a uh, toughie. The veins are nice and, and straight and the curvature is really even. So that part I really like. Just a couple little divots in some of the, the, the outer trim that I wanna fix. That's probably another couple hours takes a lot of time. This is TLC at its best. I probably won't see you next week. I am going on vacation. I will be in Norway for like a couple weeks. 
So I'm not sure if there'll be another video next week or not.